IBAC investigates allegations of corruption at the heart of Victoria's public service. There are complaints of serious systemic corruption in the public sector in Victoria. Undercover officers surveil targets, tracking money and tapping phones. I don't know when this which is going to work out that like, um, he's only got the job because of us. What I can say is that I am disturbed by the political landscape at, at all levels, at a federal level and a state level. Even those at the top can be compelled to cooperate. I'm not making any comment about those matters. Victoria's anti-corruption watchdog has confirmed Labor Premier Daniel Andrews has been compelled to give evidence as a witness behind closed doors. I'm sorry, I'm not making any comments on these matters. As part of not one, but at least two separate investigations into public administration. The fallout has already seen one minister sacked and three forced to resign. For a third time, let me make it very clear to you that I'm not making any comments. And the government's not letting anyone else comment either. Is that the reason why Daniel Andrews was... Sorry, again, again, again. Can public? we cut the feed, please? Whispers abound, but it's hard to piece together what's happened behind closed doors. Here's what we can tell you about these secret hearings. Over the past three years, IBAX held more than 100 days of private hearings, and it was on one of those days the Premier was first called as one of a number of witnesses in Operation Sandon. Operation Sandon was investigating the role and influence of lobbyists over particular planning and development decisions. Developer John Woodman is at the centre of the investigation. When Daniel Andrews first ran for Parliament in 2002, developer John Woodman donated $2,500 to his campaign. In 2017, the developer paid $10,000 for lunch with the Premier in the private dining room at Melbourne's Flower Drum restaurant. In 2018, John Woodman paid $8,500 for dinner with the Premier. Well, he might have a discussion about uh, frustrations with uh, broad policy, for instance. Oh, we want councils to approve things quicker, for instance, something like that. But not individual planning matters. No way would you have that discussion. While there's no suggestion that Daniel Andrews is suspected of wrongdoing, in draft findings detailed in media reports, IBAC described this as privileged access. In 2021, the Premier was interviewed again as one of dozens of witnesses to front Operation Watts. Operation Watts was looking at the misuse of public funds to pay for electoral and ministerial uh, officers who were doing party political work. In 2020, Victorian Labor Minister Adam Somurek was sacked after 60 Minutes broadcast this backroom conversation. I try not to get some of the payments, but no one. Oh, we asked for a letter. He later told a public hearing the Premier knew about the alleged misuse of electoral staff. I went to the Premier, I said, do you know what John's doing? He said, yes. Um, words of the effect, well, you're either going to win, yeah, well, you, you're either winning, yeah, do you want to win an election or not, basically? This is how I'll answer your question, all of them. Uh, I, I behave uh, appropriately uh, and it's my practice to follow the party's rules. <laughs> Another draft IBAC finding, also cited in media reports, says the party's culture encouraged the serious misuse of public resources for decades. The Premier may have been hauled before a third corruption investigation. It's called Operation Richmond, and although it's never been publicly confirmed, the operation is the worst kept secret in Melbourne. There have been many questions about why Daniel Andrews is being questioned in private when IBAC does hold public hearings. I think I know the matters about which you speak. By law, there's a high bar that has to be met for public hearings. 
the Commissioner has to consider criteria, including public interest and minimising undue harm. I would ask that you come back again to refer to general performance speak, matters. If a decision's made to examine a witness in private, it's because one or more of the criteria can't be met. 7.30 has seen a letter Mr Redlick sent to the Parliamentary Committee after this appearance, complaining he was gagged. In New South Wales, premiers aren't spared the glare of a public grilling that has the power to end careers. There was ICAC founder Nick Greiner. I have no recollection of the phone call. Then Barry O'Farrell. I want to categorically refute the claims about uh, the 1959 bottle of Penfold Grange. And Gladys Berejiklian. Was it affected by your personal feelings for Mr Maguire? No. Gosh. If it's good enough for Liberal Premiers in New South Wales to stand down, why isn't it good enough for Daniel Andrews and Labor here in Victoria? It's fundamentally ridiculous, in fact. I've got a very big job to do. The Victorian opposition is promising to boost IBAC's budget by $10 million a year. I think there's corruption everywhere in Victoria. I, 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 no, no political party is immune from it. No sector of public life is immune from it. And that's why you've got to be prepared to fund and resource a watchdog. The government hasn't yet made any funding commitments. With an election due later this year, all eyes will be on the Anti-Corruption Commission's findings. Hopefully over the next six months, we will be able to publish a number of reports, in particular to focus upon the issue of centralisation of power the increased sphere of influence of ministerial advisers and the diminution in the role of government departments. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.